Hello everyone and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's video we're going to be going over an alternate method of setting up a pause menu. I've made a series where we went through step by step from setting up the resources, uh, animations, objects, placing them, and then setting up the logic uh, in the objects, the input object, and went from there. And it was a very simple way of doing it. It was very visualized if we go to our objects um, in this folder is everything that we had and you can see that we just made images for all of our buttons and then in the logic is where we executed action and called the different animations right here depending on where we were in the menu all right so again, it was very easy to see, very visual, and it was it's a good start for for coming to understand uh, a, a way to get your logic out there. So now let's go over a more advanced method, I would say. Okay, so that's what this video is going to be about, and you will see that in the advanced method, which is the exact same menu, you can see on the scenes I have a simple, and then I have my advanced. But you'll see that if I drop down this folder, this is all within two objects now, okay? So there's a few benefits from changing over to a logic system like this. We'll go over a couple of them in this video. The first one is going to be that you're gonna have an easier time with your logic stream because your, your logic object is gonna be cleaner. It's gonna be easier to read and mainly because it's gonna be automatic because you're doing less micromanagement in it. All right, and so let's just take a look at what we did in the tutorial. And just and for one, just in case you haven't seen it, this will give you an idea. So when we go to our resume state in the pause menu, you see that we're executing three object actions. And then in options, we're doing the same thing. And then if we go to options setup, where we set up the gauges, we call six object actions. And then we also generate some objects, which we needed. And then you'll see in the main setup, we're doing the same thing. We're executing six object, object actions. So we're doing a lot of micromanaging in this logic center for one. And say that you had a really nice pause menu with a lot of things going on, a lot of bells and whistles, sound effects, filters, all this stuff. You're going to get long lists and it's going to be a lot harder to read. So now let's compare it to this new method real quick. And then I'll s explain why it's this way. All right, so, and I've named it signalers and it's the input management, okay? And I just did it just so I know this is a signaler and it's about my input. So now let's see what I do in my resume. And when we click on it, there's nothing in it. There's nothing in options, nothing in exit game those execute object actions are gone. We still need the generate object because those are necessary logics. Um, I still got the logic for all this stuff, but there's no execute object actions at all. So now let's talk about the concept, okay? Why, how can it, this be automatic? All right, and you'll see that I've named it signaler because the concept is, is instead of going to the state, this is the old one, instead of going to the state and calling everything that it needs to do, what I want it to do is when it's in this state, just naturally from the way that this flows, I want this state to basically say, hey, I'm in this state. Anybody that's listening, react accordingly. But I don't care if you're listening. That's, that's what Resume is saying. I don't care if you're listening, but if you are, I'm in Resume. <laughs> and then when you press down, it changes and it says, hey, I'm out of Resume. I'm now in Options. Anybody that's listening, please do your thing. And I don't care if you're listening, okay? It's like a bad parent. Um, and then we go down to Options. It, you know, it does the same thing. I don't care if you're listening, but if you are, do. So how is it changing anything? How, how is it changing the images, all right? Well, 
now we'll go to our to what I've called the listeners. Okay. Now you're going to see a lot of things in here and I guess real quick, I'll just go over the second benefit of a system like this uh, before I get into what, how they're listening. The, the second benefit is you'll see that in our old method, we had a background object just for the background image. We had an object just for the resume images an object just for the menu selection, okay, or for the options, I mean. So we had a ton of objects. So another benefit of this is it's actually better performance in your game. Because if you can instance things out of the same object, you're going to have better performance in your game. Because it's, it's going off one object. It only had to preload one object and the instances, all of these instances inside of here, they're all sharing the same object. So it's not loading all of these objects into your scenes. It's loading this main one and then a bunch of these it's instances, if that makes sense. And l let me reiterate this real quick, because you'll see in my... This is the old one, the simple pause menu. You'll see that you know, we, we set it up, you know, just like this. We have our images that we needed and, and all that stuff. Now, if I drop down this advanced one, you'll see that I have the same amount of uh, objects out there. But this version is going to be less performance heavy in the end. Say you have a big menu you know, an items menu, and stuff like this, or you've got a lot of objects in your scene already, all right, this is going to help increase performance because you're, um, from right here to right here, they're all the same object. They're sharing the parent object. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And so we can go back to our options here. So you'll see that here's our options. Here's our exit Here's our BGM, our sound effects. Here's our resume. And I put this in a group just to show that you can have this in a group. You don't, you can close them and open them. And you can see that they're just, they're standalone objects inside a parent because none of these will affect each other. They're all just single instance. And how you refer to the, to, uh, what action you want is on your scene here. Let's just say I, I hadn't add resume yet, okay? I would just click on my listeners right here and I would click in here. And then I would go over here where it says action on appearance and I would say, I want this one to be resume. And there we go. You can see we have the whole list of every action that we want. So this is really handy to get um, a, a different action group, you could call it, inside the same object. And then I place it right there. That's exactly what I did. And I did that with all of this. So right away we can see that the setup, let's just take options for instance, the setup is a little different than how they were on our last one. For instance, let's go to the options of our uh, last way we set up the menu, and you'll see that there was no links associated with them. We just had our off, on, and no image. But now if we go to this option listener here, we have links now going back and forth. All right. So by default on the scene, option starts off. Okay. So it does no runtime actions. It's just just literally starting in the off state. And we know that the menu starts in the resume state, okay? So really all we have to know is where is the logic going to go? Where can it go? And right away we know that if you press down, it can go to options. Also, if you press up, it can go to exit game. Those are the only two exits from menu outside of leaving the menu. Okay, so it starts in off. So let's see what can happen here. So in order to leave, this is how you 
make it a listener, okay, with this link condition. And some of you might be familiar with it. It's called specify or specified objects action changes. Again, it's listening for an action change. And so in this case, I'm selecting the object, which is uh, the signalers input manager. And the action that I'm wanting to sense that it changed is I want to see if it went to the options action. All right. Now there's an option right here that says when not doing this specified action. And this can be really handy too. But in this case, we just want to say, hey, if you're in the options action, then, I then this will be true. And so once it's true, it goes to options on. All right, so again, like I was saying, you press down and now options, and now this state is saying, hey, anyone who's listening, I'm in options. And now in your listeners, options off was like, hey, I'm listening, and then it goes to options on, All right? So now let's take a look at how to get back to options on, or to options off. So I use the specify object action here, and I said when not doing this specified object or this uh, action, and that would be options. So that would mean if I'm anywhere outside of the options, then this is going to be off, which is fine because we only want it to turn on when we are on options. But now we have another option because, or another thing to do, because you can click on options. If we, again, if we go back to the input manager, we can go to exit game, we can go to resume by pressing up or down, or we can press A and go to option setup. So we have to think about where the logic can go as well. So because this can go someplace else, we need to be able to show the no image. That's why we would call it on our last way and we would say, hey, show no image, but we would physically call it to do or to do that. We're now we're just signaling it to do it. All right, so since we know the next action where we want it to disappear, let's see how I set that up again. I can't really remember. If we go to the link, you'll see that when I'm in options setup, okay. So I when I'm, okay, that's just kind of what I was saying. What was the next action? And it was option setup. So when you're in options setup, boom, we're going to show no image because that meant that we left the main portion of the pause menu. So you could see that there's probably a similar thing for this link uh, resume off to no image. And if you think about it, resume can only be off if you're going into the options menu, because that means options was selected if you're going there. So that's why the link is right here. All right. And so again, options set up. And then the same with exit, it can only do it when exits off. So that's where the link goes when it's an option setup. So by now you can probably see that I'm using this condition throughout all of the links. Every single link is using a specified object action to listen to what the input manager is doing. And you can see the main concept is, is that I have the all the different responses that an item can have, for instance, in this little action island here, can be on, off, or no. And then I set the appropriate specified action depending on what I need it to do based off the state that the input manager would be in. So now let's talk about some of the things to consider if you are using something like this you'll see that I used specified object action of the signal input manager, which is also on the same uh, menu scene, okay? 
Now, the cool thing is, is that this input manager could be on the gameplay HUD for all we care, and it's going to do the same thing. It, it's going to work because the menus will sense objects that are on different menu layers. Where this won't work is if you're trying to sense, say you came to this listener and you said, hey, I also want to know if the player is jumping. Now, that's not going to work because the menu scene and the normal scene do not read actions from other objects. Okay? If we play test here, and we go to debug and say object data, you'll see that we have two options. We have normal scene and menu scene. Okay, and that this is how we can show different ones. So they do not share objects. For instance, you can't execute object action either. So you can't do any of those um, between normal and menu scene. And then the other thing to consider is that Say for some reason you disable a menu where the input manager is on as well, then that also wouldn't work. Now, chances are that would never happen, but just throwing that out there because you never know. All right, and so that is the gist of it. That is where I'll leave you guys. I could go through each of these links and show you exactly what's going on, but I think this was enough information to get you started. And the reason why I like this system is that I can just lay out exactly how I want my menu to be, like knowing what I need it to do. And then I can just have the actions that are necessary uh, when I press exit game, you know, A on exit game or A on options or something like that. And then from my on my listener side, I can have this take care of all the visual stuff, all the changing of the buttons that the, the players are looking for for guidance basically and then they're all wrapped up in one parent object because you're only you got to remember all objects come with all of these settings by default all right we're in like an engine like unity or godot or something when you create an object it, it's a blank object and then you would have to add these objects or these uh, components or nodes, whatever. Okay, but with PGM, they come pre-built with all of these main things, okay? So we have to consider that as your games get bigger, more objects on your scene, stuff like this, um, it's good to get in this habit. So I hope that this method um, will made sense. And if you have any other cool ways that you've done, uh, feel free to share in the comment below. I'm always looking for, you know, we should always be looking for what's the best practice. And this is, I'm not going to say this is the best practice, but this is definitely a better uh, setup than uh, this last one that I did on the tutorial, even though this made sense visually. So I'm going to keep those tutorials up because I think it's a good basis to get and yeah, I'll see you at the next video.